Hey guys, so I've got another Linux distribution review for you today. Today, we're going to be looking at OpenSUSE 42.1. Now, I'm going to be showing you a virtual machine on the video today because this video is coming to you a little bit late and have since moved on to the next distribution that I'm testing. So since this is a bit of a review where I sort of explain more about my experiences rather than a product demonstration where I show you the features, uh, what's on the screen is not really that important. Um, but if you kind of want a basic grasp of the default layout for OpenSUSE, then I'll run through th some some vaguely relevant things um, with the with the screen cap or something, so I said I wasn't going to do OpenSUSE um, because it's an enterprise. It's clearly like uh, focused on the enterprise market, which is not really a market I'm either familiar with, nor really feel like I can sort of bring any kind of um, constructive critique. So I'm going to be talking about OpenSUSE as a as a distribution that you might use at home in contrast to the to the whole enterprise side of things, because as an enterprise. Linux distribution, OpenSUSE is really good. It's exactly what it needs to be. It's exactly what it wants to be. It's exactly what it sets out to be. And some of the great things about OpenSUSE include um, things like support and a lot of the power that Novell has a company behind SUSE. So there is that's another factor in if you're looking at an enterprise deployment and that's i th I, I i would say that is where the entire sort of operation of, of SUS is is strongest in the sense you know in its deployment in the enterprise field and its support in the enterprise field and you know novella are a company that have built themselves up around that that being said there are a few things about OpenSUSE which i did feel um are worth bringing to this particular review most notably the NVIDIA drivers were easy to download, install, and get running. There's also an explicit manual page for it, which is pretty easy to follow along with as well. I had no problems with NVIDIA, so at least you can, you know, you can play games, you can edit movies, and you can do that stuff on, on OpenSUSE as an enterprise distribution, because enterprise distributions have historically suffered with this, although that or struggled with this, but they are... 10 times better than they were even just two years ago. I mean, the amount of progress that we've made on uh, Linux's uh, greatest weaknesses um, has been absolutely um, phenomenal. And it's basically the push that got me to, to go Linux 100%. Um, and and OpenSUSE is, is still sort of rocking that. But that being said, the thing about OpenSUSE is that there were some things that felt either missing or incomplete or something that you would ex sort of almost expect more of from from SUS. Uh, I installed it with the KDE desktop. So I came in and, and I booted in with the KDE desktop and it looked like a very standard KDE desktop. Um, I mean, it looked nice, but then KDE generally looks nice, or at least it does in, in my my personal opinion. And it was running a reasonably standard theme. It hadn't like um, the guys at uh, OpenSUSE hadn't either endorsed or or created a specific theme for their distributions, which is something that I always um, feel um, is a is is a very it's a very superficially strong thing for a distribution to have is a good first impression visually. Um, Manjaro and Antergos did a great job at this, where you'd boot into the desktop environment for the first time and it would look polished, it would look shiny, it would be a little bit different to the default, but not so different that you actually felt lost, and it would have maybe a different theme. And other distributions do this, and, and for some reason I felt when I booted into OpenSUSE that they had, um, had stuck pretty strongly with the KDE desktop. Now, the KDE is a damn good desktop, and I don't necessarily blame them for it, but I, I guess I was expecting a little bit more customization um, and a little bit more of a SUS touch, but uh, but there you go. Now, SUS, interestingly enough, is my first Linux distribution. I think I, I started SUS, I got SUS free on, on the front cover of like Linux format or something back at the time, and um, and that was my very first distribution. I think it was in 1997, and I was, I was but like nine years old. So, you know, that's... Uh, so I do have like that kind of. I always follow SUSE and OpenSUSE because of that almost. Uh, and in all honesty, like when I booted into it, it actually was quite. There was like it, it did kind of feel like it was a very similar distribution to it what to to what it was all those years ago. Obviously, the it had, it's become more significantly polished. There are more applications you can do a damn sight more with it. But the the sort of the interface. Um, just it did seem consistent over a long period of time, and I really do actually respect that. Um, so the thing that um, Seuss does that um, that it really likes to 
to, to sort of wear as a badge is YAST. Now, YAST is effectively a control panel where you can install and maintain your computer, and it was really user-friendly. I could jump in and I could do all of my customization options. You know, it was very quick to actually set up uh, off the bat. So, um, and, and, and YAST was a big part of that. It, it allowed a very user-friendly way to get you, your basic applications up and running, as well as um, as, as configuring all the system settings that you wanted to do. Now, I have not tried this on the GNOME desktop, but I would assume that considering that GNOME and KDE seem to be like the two flagship distributions for SUSE, um, that, they, that, that GNOME would be just as polished. I've always associated SUSE as a KDE um, sort of, you know, a distribution that focuses more on KDE, but, and, and I think some other people have said that, but personally, um, um, you can use it for, for anything else. So the reason why this is a little bit late coming is because I kind of didn't really know what to say. I didn't actually feel like that I even actually accrued enough information about OpenSUSE that I could even present it as a useful review because it's actually kind of very similar to Fedora, really, except that it runs slightly more stable but older software. And they're both very focused very much at the enterprise market, and they both do enterprise things very, very well. They both have their own sort of setup, and um, and I guess it, I don't know, it's, again, it doesn't feel like a home distribution. It doesn't feel like something that you play games on. It feels like something you check emails and do spreadsheets on. That's clearly what they're going for. But that being said, I have heard um, people speak about getting uh, getting more support for Steam and getting more stuff on Steam and getting... Getting uh, getting SUS in open SUS into into more homes and expanding that way. Um, in terms of a recommendation, I probably wouldn't recommend it for a home user, and, and probably would recommend it for an enterprise user, or at least I would recommend it to a user that didn't have any intention of playing games or um, or doing anything with multimedia. That, to be said, doesn't mean that you can't play games and do multimedia on SUSE and OpenSUSE. It just means that it's easy. I, I would say that it's easier to do it on like Manjaro, Antergos, um, Ubuntu, Mint. You know, it, they seem to have, have, have embraced that a little bit more. It's just a different culture of different Linux distributions. And, um, and obviously, the real strength of Linux as a family of operating systems is that you can choose what's, what's right for you. There, I'm not going to say there are no right or wrong answers, but there are certainly, uh, but it's certainly a case of, uh, you know, working out what solution you want for the problems that you're up against. So all in all, actually a pretty strong, stable distribution. I have no real faults with it, other than there could be more third-party software support, and there could be some kind of way to, um, like some kind of equivalent of an Arch user repository or the ability to add in third-party repositories in an easy way or possibly, and this could very well be a criticism of the wider software community or the wider open source software community than, than SUSE itself, but the package libraries did not feel as large as they were with Arch or with Ubuntu. Um, but then again, of course, as, a, as, a, as an enterprise geared distribution, I think that kind of comes with the territory. So, yes, I liked it. I think it's a really good distribution and it's very good at what it specializes in. And I think that's really all I've got to say about it. I'm sorry it might not necessarily be the most exciting and and um, sort of, you know, I'm not, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not unveiling anything particularly exciting about OpenSUSE, but it's a strong, steady, enterprise-focused distribution going stronger and steadier by the day. And if that's the kind of thing that you're looking for... Um, OpenSUSE might be um, might be a distribution for you. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Those of you that do use SUSE and OpenSUSE, please down in the comments explain why you chose to do it. Uh, chose to do it. Why you choose uh, OpenSUSE? Why you like it? Um, and where you think its strengths are as a you know as users over a longer period of time, whatever. Because um, I feel that maybe people could learn more from that than than my couple of weeks of just using it. But that being said. The the real takeaway that I personally got from it as someone that, that goes from distribution to distribution every couple of weeks is that this is becoming more typical of Linux. But that's good. That that strong, stable, steady distributions, they're becoming less of a uh, an event. They're becoming more the norm, more the standard. And even though I don't have anything exciting to say about uh, OpenSUSE, that in, in and of itself isn't a bad thing because 
at the core of it, a distribution is supposed to get out of your way and let the programs do the talking. And OpenSUSE does that really quite well for the programs that it supports. And uh, I came across no, um, I came across yeah, I came across no bugs that were um, that were really worth noting back to the review. As I tend, to, as I installed the distribution itself on uh, day one. I think there were a few cosm cosmetic bugs or a few whatever, the smallest of things that I can't even remember at this point, uh, as you get with um, day zero, you know, sort of like day zero releases. So thank you very much for listening to me babble on about OpenSUSE. Uh, I apologize that I don't actually have my desktop to show you, but um, I have already started testing Linux Mint. So that will be my next distribution review. And it quite possibly will be my last until uh, we start seeing another Linux Mint and Ubuntu set. Um, and the reason for that is simply because um, I want to focus on other stuff. Um, I feel that now that I've touched on most of the main distributions, uh, with the exception of Linux Mint, which of course I will deal with probably in the next week, because I've already, like I say, I've already installed it and I've already got it up and running. But now that I sort of know um, personally and have worked personally with distributions now for, for a while, I feel that distro hopping in some capacities is actually holding me back from doing uh, other more exciting things um, in terms of the Linux software rather than the distributions themselves. And I kind of want to get stuck in there for, uh, for next year and, and try and talk more about what Linux is really achieving and, and that kind of stuff rather than just see what distributions are popping out now. Because from here on in, if I was to do like these kind of distribution reviews, they would get significantly more boring once I've actually sort of laid out the basics for uh, for what each distribution's philosophy and release schedule is. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.